In order to make a correct stretch, you need to be able to quickly and effectively estimate the length of hose you will need. Before we stretch that line, we have to be able to quickly estimate the length of hose we will need for the job. This is typically done as a two-step process. First, estimate the length of hose you will need between the apparatus and the entrance to the fire building. This is typically 50 to 100 feet for private dwellings and varies for commercial structures. Next, estimate the length of hose needed inside the fire building. For private dwellings, always stretch enough hose to cover the entire dwelling in case you have to reposition the line. Smoke. Don't breathe smoke. Smoke is a toxic blend of chemicals that is immediately dangerous to your life and your health. Smoke contains the toxic twins, carbon monoxide, hydrogen cyanide, and is not safe to breathe at any time, for any reason, by firefighters on the fire ground. Look at this list of chemicals. It reads like a who's who of cancer-causing agents, destined to take its toll on the firefighter's health and the firefighter's ability to make good decisions. While all of these chemicals can be expected in the modern fire environment, there is a way for firefighters to protect themselves and their families from the devastating short-term and long-term effects of smoke. The SCBA. The SCBA provides firefighters with a safe, reliable, clean supply of breathable air. The officer assigned to the search group has three basic priorities. First is the safety of the crew. Second is developing a search plan and then implementing it. And last is keeping the incident commander informed as to the progress of the search and any difficulties that are encountered. Any group or division officer's first responsibility is the safety of the crew. This is why, in Chief Coleman's opinion, the search officer should not be sweeping in corners or under beds. This would require multitasking. Multitasking does not work inside a burning building. Ventilation is a critical task that must be performed routinely on a fire ground. Ventilation operations combine many dangers, some of which include gaining access to the roof area by either portable ladder or aerial device, operating power tools or swinging hand tools, and the fact that often operations are being conducted above the main body of fire. Without proper ventilation, the smoke and superheated gases produced by the fire will build up and make conditions inside the building less tenable and more dangerous for firefighters and potential victims. At many departments, standard operating procedures call for a single engine response to vehicle fires. This response underestimates the potential hazards that vehicle fires pose, as well as the extensive resources needed to deal with these incidents properly. There are many ancillary tasks that must be completed such as scene safety, traffic control, forcible entry, vehicle stabilization, overhaul, fire cause determination, hazard and spill control. For these reasons, it is important not to underestimate these incidents, both from a staffing and from a tactical standpoint. It is wise to send a second unit to provide additional water, support services, and to block traffic.